keep finding myself wanting to make devlogs. I'm being inspired by people doing post mods on game jams, or making videos that follow the whole process of a game from start to finish. Now I know there are a lot of greats out there, like uh, Black Thornprod, Jonas, and Danny, but I'm hoping that you might be interested in my fairly shitty games. So that's what we're going to try today. We're going to try going through my new project that I'm working on, whether or not it gets scrapped or not. I did try making a devlog on Instagram, which was okay. So the knight itself has eight health. The shield on the front can infinitely deflect bullets, but the knight is weak vertically. So if you're within two units horizontally, the knight will go four times faster, and this increases up to 1.5 units upwards. So if you're above his head, he's going to be going slow, or if you're far enough away. And this means you can shoot him in the, the head or shoot him in the feet. But if that shield's facing you, you're going to get hit back. I had some interesting bits in it, but you could tell I was heavily breathing because I did not want to be on camera. However, if I really wanted to start making more game dev videos, I'd have to transition my main channel over, rather than my secondary channel, which is just a couple of random game trailers that I made. So this called for the great purge of my YouTube videos. So unlisting anything that wasn't game dev related was particularly unprofessional. So this includes like my Wind Waker stream compilation. Okay, I was gonna glide that and instead of jumping with the bomb. I'm surprised we somehow survived. My Phasmophobia stream compilation. He was like glitching, it looked like he was trying to go for you or something. I've Wait, I'm coming closer, the... I'm coming closer. Oh, he's here! He's gonna get me! He's gonna get me! He's gonna get me! He's gonna get me! He's on top of me! He's on top of me! What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? He's literally, he's, he's in my face and he's matched my speed. What the fuck? Why is he keep coming for me? <laughs> and my hot French teacher caught with a boner story. <laughs> That one had quite a few dislikes. Yeah. After this was done, my hands pulsed with power. The power of the purge. Next I targeted my Instagram, this time leaving my post alone. But I did remove a lot of follows where I was simping a little bit. Didn't think it was very on brand. This took a long time. Finally, there was some quiet and calm. The rage monster could be put at ease. Visible breathing could come to a stop. Anyway, let's take a look at my current project, dubbed Hoist. So I'm not really sure where the idea for Hoist came from, but I do know the character design, which I'll get onto later, came a little bit from the game Moonlighter. In some of the promotional art I saw for that game, this giant rucksack on this character, I thought it was quite a cool design. My original plan for the game, yes, original plan, it might change, was to have a game about ropes, weight, and physical inventory space. This took the concept of carrying around a backpack that would actually physically weigh your character down based on how much stuff they were carrying. This would then lead to them having a reduced run speed, a reduced jump height, and you get the idea. So how would you get around these limitations? So you'd have to take your backpack off, then you would regain your run speed and jump ability. The plan from then out was that once you were up on a higher ledge, you could use a rope to hoist your backpack back up. So you would constantly be doing this thing of bringing items to the backpack, moving it, taking it off, hoisting it up, and so on. And I even came up with some ideas for like killing enemies by using this rope to make the bag fall on them, things like that. So you wouldn't actually be fighting enemies, you would be kind of defeating them in a puzzle-like way. The aim of the game was around collecting treasure, so that's what you'd be putting in your backpack. So you'd be spelunking around, and then you would have to leave back to the surface at the end. Okay, so now that the general idea for Hoist had been created, it was time to create an empty Unity project. As soon as this Unity project opened, I was kind of daunted a little bit, and decided, nah, I can't be bothered. So instead, I went to GitHub, and I took a copy of my existing failed and scrap project, <laughs> which was one to do with jetpacks and guns. Once I had this project, I began to remove anything I didn't need. So this was wall jumping and the jetpacks. I believe I left shooting him for the time being. Now that I had a less fun project, I decided to ask myself, how do ropes work? Why is physics? 
So I YouTubed and I found a bunch of tutorials about hinges in Unity. The example I saw had a bunch of hinge joints for each rope node and then it had a distance joint to keep the whole rope within a certain distance. I kept the solution in mind and started looking for more realistic ropes. So I stumbled across a video on verlet integration and went through this and it made some pretty sexy looking ropes. So I got this into my game and was working with rigid bodies but it wasn't working like wrapping around static objects so things that didn't have rigid bodies so like your floor and your walls and I really wanted the rope to be able to bend around all these different objects so I went nah 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 and I went back to the hinge thing that I shunned so quickly and easily so I had my hinges with sprites and I wanted it to look more like a rope so I used a line renderer and I got each point of each node and use those to feed into the line renderer. So I then added some poorly written code to attach to objects and reel in a rope that's attached to an object. And then I added it to my player. This resulted in a prototype that I'm pretty fond of. So just this little guy, the jetpack guy, running around in the dark with the, you know, some sexy lighting from the high definition render pipeline. And I was pretty pleased with it. So one thing you will notice is that the walls are the edge of the camera. And that's going to be important later because there's an issue that came up which I didn't notice because of that. So a couple of days later I got bored and I randomly changed it from the high definition render pipeline to the universal render pipeline with the 2D lights package. Why not I guess. Feeling highly motivated with my now pulsing motivational hands, I cracked on and decided to make the level bigger so you don't bang your head. So it turns out the ropes can travel through walls and get stuck, so the way I had my camera set up before I couldn't actually see the other side of the wall, so I didn't know that the rope was going through the wall. So that was a big problem, and that was something that I needed to address. So I was using some Raycast math to determine how long the line should be. And I actually ended up using a box cast, so this was so that if the object you were trying to attach to was within this box, so it was basically a little bit wider than your normal raycast then it would try and attach to it so it's basically aim assist just to make everything feel a little bit better so that's why i did that in um but it was causing some issues because when you weren't colliding with anything the rope was pretty accurate and when you were colliding with something that wasn't like manually set in script to attach so like you know a ball that you throw around if it was something just like the floor or a wall it would try and bring the line up to the point where the raycast hit, which is fine. But the physics system was pushing the rope nodes through the wall and extending the line because the line renderer didn't care where these nodes were. So I had another issue that was quite weird. So if you were to pick up like a ball and throw it in the game, it was quick. So you had the fast reel option and the slow reel where you could slowly pull in the rope and pick up the object. But if you were hanging from something and use fast reel, it would be really slow. And I think it was something to do with the hinges, well, at, at this point, distance joints, trying to pull themselves together. And it just was slow, presumably, because of the mass of the object underneath. So that was an issue I kept in my mind. I didn't really know how to fix these, so I did what any good dev would do, and I decided to play Space Engineers instead. Look at this awesome rocket that we built. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So I obviously wasn't doing much development. So for my weekly catch up with fellow game developer Jeff Jupiter, there's a link to his Instagram down below, we decided to run over the issue. Now generally these catch ups are revolved around setting each other an aim for the week as a bit of motivation to get something done when you're not in competition but when someone else is doing something because they're assuming you'll do yours, it just helps. So these game dev aims can be anything from coming up with a story, making some art, doing some programming or making a video about your game. So with Jeff's added motivation I decided to look at a different aspect of the game, one that might keep me motivated longer. So I decided to make some new art, rework the character. So after many many trash designs, I settled on this guy. I think he looks pretty cool. And then I sent him to some friends and they basically said his grey hair is Shit. 
so I changed it to brown hair. Now we have this guy and he looks pretty cool, but I had grown quite attached to the existing character that I had, considering I had him for two projects. It was quite hard to replace him. However, then I thought, this rope that I've got, what if he was like a talking robot or someone with personality? And then I found out what this looked like with, you know, emotes on it. So here we've got some designs and we've got some like heart eyes and stuff like that. And I was like, screw the old guy, bring this guy in. But I did decide to commemorate the old character design by making a post about replacing the old design. So we have this really salty looking old design pointing a shotgun at the new design. So this was kind of inspired by Zelda Breath of the Wild. There's some art of him passing on the sword. And it was kind of inspired by that, but it was a more salty shotgun one. So with the art done, I could finally face those programming issues, but I didn't and I played more Space Engineers. After this, I decided I'd put it off longer by looking at animations. After days of failing to copy the Mega Man walk cycle, which everybody recommends, I found some random sprite art that seemed to help more, and I discovered something that kind of helped me and I'm going to use it going forwards, which was that I basically had my legs moving on this sprite, but it didn't seem right. And the actual issue was, you know, I'm not moving the torso, I only had the legs animated. But I was struggling to figure out how it would look in my head, especially when I was picturing, you know, how's the head going to move, how's the torso going to move, how's the back going to move as well. So what I did is I turned off every layer except for the legs, and I'm like, I'm going to focus on, do these legs look like they're moving properly? And then I turned that off, and I went to the next layer. So I did, I think I did the arms next. So I, I did a normal arm cycle, had that running with the legs after, and then I did a torso, tried to make it match between the two, and so on. Got to the head, just added some bob, because I thought it would look alright. Did the same for the bag. And then, yeah, I think it turned out turned out okay. Something that I can look at again in the future, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it for now. I also added a pickup animation. It doesn't have an animation for stood still picking up an item, but that shouldn't be too hard. That'll come down the line. After this, I played some Space Engineers. Yeah, I did. And I, I took a picture. Um, I did a Mars landing. It was cool. Here's a rover. <laughs> I don't know what you want. Next up, it was finally time to try and address the rope issues. After days of distress, I fixed the rope length issue, which was good. <laughs> so I reworked my ropes as well. So I changed from having tons of distance joints to going to hinge joints to then finally spring joints and messed around with the mass. I changed the order the rope nodes are deleted in to be a little bit more mass friendly. Um, originally it was deleting them at the top of the rope and then it would pull the player up as it tried to sort itself out. But I changed this to delete the second to last node so it wouldn't delete the one the player was attached to. It would move the rope and try and reattach where the original was, basically. So that's how that was working, and it works okay. There's there's a delay, so you can't reel in really fast, um, but it's okay for now. I did some changes to the character movement to make it a little bit better. So I made it so that you had a max speed, horizontally at least for now, just so you couldn't go crazy speeds and it was still controllable. And I made it so that if you create a rope that's not attached to anything, it has a mass of basically zero, so that when you're running around you don't have this weight stopping you moving as fast, and there's not this jolt in the air if you don't connect to anything, which I wasn't really a fan of when it was moving me when I was jumping. I know I'm reading from a script. I'm not actually looking at the script right now, I'm looking at a monitor, but there is a script that I keep... I know, okay? <laughs> I know I'm reading from the script. I had a new problem. This is probably the greatest problem I've had. The game's kind of lost its identity a bit. So originally it was to do with, you know, the weight of your bag and all this kind of stuff. The character design has a bag in it anyway, like, just because it's somewhere to put this little gadget. So then having two bags is kind of weird, and I know it's like a small thing, but it's just something that I think about. But that's not the main reason. The main reason is 
is kind of good moving around at high speed. And that wasn't really how I imagined the game originally. I sort of imagined this slow exploration thing where you're hoisting this bag up. But I mean, there's things like the instant reel to pick stuff up. So you just instantly pull the bag up. And I'm kind of wondering, does it need those? Or is it okay for it to be, you know, this acrobatic grappling hook game, which might be a little bit generic? I do really like the original idea still. But it's kind of hard to think of how it would work slower now. The game is having an identity crisis. So I hopped on a call with Jeff, and Jeff sounding as wise as a Jedi, he went on to say, follow the fun. And that's kind of stuck with me, and it's going to be sticking with me going forwards, because I can't be so stuck in the original idea that I ignore fun in the way that I'm currently moving around. Now I do still think about the original idea, and if there's any things that I want to keep, or if I want to, you know, fully go to it. But at the minute, it's fun moving around at high speed. To the point where, like, I'm playing the game to procrastinate and dick around. <laughs> because it is fun just moving around in it. So that's why the game is now a racing game. No, it's not. I'm, I'm still working on the identity crisis. Now, I don't know what the game is going to be currently. But if you want to see what happens to it, then you know, stay here to get updated. Or if it ends up in the recycling bin. I'll mention that as well. You know, the reasons for it, what I learned, and where I'm going to go next. Thanks for watching.